Hi everyone, I'm Christina from Proverbs 31 Homestead. Thanks for joining me today. A lot of people are talking about quail. They're the hot new homestead animal. And it leaves a lot of people wondering, gee, should I raise quail? Should I raise chickens? Should I do both? Does that make sense? So I'm hoping today's video will help iron out some of the details about whether or not these animals are right for your homestead. We happen to have both. So first, very briefly, let's discuss why you might want either one of these animals. Chickens might be more obvious, but both quail and chickens are a great source of both meat and eggs. Um, if you live in the suburbs or you live in a rural area, chickens are great. Um, if you are in the rural area or the suburbs or an urban area, quail are probably going to work really well for you as well. One thing people ask about is the noise level. So the quail are being pretty quiet right now, but they are very busy animals and they can be really noisy. Yes, the roosters crow, it sounds different than what a, you know, a chicken rooster sounds like, but they're loud. And I personally have females who are at least as loud as the males. Our house is maybe 75 yards from where we keep our quail and I can be on my porch and hear the quail. On the other hand, a lot of people say, oh no, quail are so much more quiet than chickens. So I think with chickens, it depends on the breed you have. We, as you know, I, I love Australorps and right now that's what our entire flock is. Uh, I have a video explaining why I love Australorps and I'll put a link in the description. Um, one of the reasons is that they're generally very docile and quiet. Um, so breed plays a part in that, but so does individual personalities. So when it comes to noise, I think it's kind of a toss up. It just depends on your particular animals. The quail can be noisy, apparently they can be really quiet too, and I think the same thing goes for chickens. Obviously, if you're in an area like the suburbs where your neighbors might complain if the animals are noisy, you are not going to want roosters. And that, you know, makes life a little more interesting when you want to reproduce the animals. It means you have to go to somebody else for fertile eggs or for chicks. So you might prefer quail for meat. My family, generally, is not really excited about chicken meat. We find it a bit bland, even when it's pasture raised, it's just not really our thing. We do eat it, but it's probably one of our least favorite, if not our least favorite, meat. Quail, a lot of people compare the meat to chicken, but we find that it has a slightly more assertive flavor. And depending upon how you cook it, you can really bring out that flavor more or it can taste a little bit more bland, similar to chicken. So if you're not big on chicken meat, you like a little bit more flavor, I wouldn't say it's gamey. Um, that has sort of negative connotations. I, I once cooked quail with a little bit of soy sauce and that was a big mistake for our family. It was super gamey. For some reason, it really brought out that flavor. But for the most part, quail is not gamey, domestic quail. You might prefer quail if you want your animals to reproduce quickly. So quail, it only takes 18 days for them to hatch and then they are mature at six to eight weeks. So you can imagine that you can very quickly build up your stock of quail, and which is especially important if you want to sell them or you want to get meat from them. On the other hand, chickens, they take 21 days to hatch and they aren't mature for like 18 to 26 weeks depending upon the breed that you're raising and whether you're raising them for meat or you just want eggs or whatever. Um, quail also will lay eggs sooner. Again, that's a six to eight week deal for quail. And with chickens, that's gonna be 18 to 26 weeks. So while your chickens are busy eating your feed, and of course that costs money, um, and not laying eggs, your quail have already produced tons of eggs. You also might want quail if you want eggs daily. 
Now, really good laying hens, if you choose the right breed, and you know, there's certain, you know, the personality, if you will, of that particular hen matters as well. You can get an egg a day from your chickens, but it doesn't seem typical. I generally get an egg a day from my Australorps. They're really good layers, but some, you know, a lot of other breeds and a lot of other chicken owners I know, they just don't get that. They might get five eggs a week or something like that. Quail are going to lay every day as long as their needs are met. By the way, that was a crow. <laughs> kind of a soft crow, but a crow. Uh, let's see, you are also gonna get more eggs from quail. They are just really prolific. Some people tell me their quail lay more than one egg a day. I have sometimes wondered if mine are doing that, but I haven't really tracked it closely enough to see if that is the case. If a chicken does that, usually something's wrong with it. Um, but your quail, the average quail, hen, is going to lay 300 eggs a year. Whereas your average chicken hen only lays 150 a year. So way more eggs. Granted, the eggs are smaller, but you have that steady supply coming in. Um, you might want to raise quail because you like the taste of their eggs better. Some people say that a chicken egg and a quail egg taste the same to them. But a lot of people can tell a difference. My husband describes them as being more buttery. To him, quail eggs are the epitome of eggs and hands down he prefers quail eggs. Um, I can't give you an opinion on that because unfortunately, wah, wah, I am intolerant of all eggs under all circumstances. They make me really ill. Um, another reason to have quail is you can butcher them at a much earlier age, right? They are mature at six to eight weeks and that is their full weight and you can butcher them. Whereas if you have meat chickens, you know, you're looking at a much longer time period where you have to feed them and usually meat chickens are rather poor foragers. Even if you're going for a meat breed that is a little better at foraging, you're still going to feed them a lot of feed. So that can be a really good reason to raise quail. Now again, they're smaller, you're getting fewer pounds per bird. But the cool thing about quail is that they're more filling. I understand this is because they are higher protein, so I can't even imagine somebody, an adult, wanting more than one or two quail at a meal. You would just be too full. It's more filling somehow than chicken, so bear that in mind. Egg to feed ratio. This is interesting. Now, I have not personally measured feed at my own homestead, but I have looked at agricultural um, papers that are put out by the government about egg to feed ratio. And they say that Caternic quail, which is what we have here and which is what most people are raising for meat and eggs in the United States and really elsewhere, um, their ratio is about two, a little over two pounds, like 2.5 pounds of feed per one pound of egg. Whereas chickens are like 3.2 pounds per one pound of egg. Now I will say that Caternic quail are very, very messy eaters. <laughs> they spray feed everywhere. So there is waste involved and this, I don't believe, these numbers I gave you, take that into account. There are a few things you can do to help mitigate that problem. You can go online and look for what's called a zero waste quail feeder. It should be called, you know, less waste or something like that. It makes it harder for the quail to spread their feed and have it drop into the poop tray or on the ground, however you choose to raise your quail. Another thing that I like to do, obviously mine are in cages and that's because we have terrible predators around here. I just don't feel, even though I like the idea of always raising my animals in the most natural way I can, um, I don't see how I could predator proof an aviary or a, a, a cage where they would be down on the ground. But at any rate, I have found these metal pie tins at a thrift store and I put them directly under our feeders 
and you can see it catches feed. Hopefully you can see that. It catches feed that they dribble. So I just cleaned this this morning, so there's not much in it right now, but by the end of the day, there'll be quite an amount. And I just flick away the poop, put it in the poop tray, and I put this feed back in their feed. So I'm saving a little bit of money that way. I also will take the poop trays, there we go, and that have still some feed in them, and put them in the chicken run. And the chickens will scratch through it, eat the feed, and so I'm saving costs that way as well. And then the poop just ends up going into the ground and it's good for the soil. Oh, space is a really big deal. Okay, this is probably the main reason that a lot of people look into raising quail. They require so little space. Assuming, no, even if you're doing it in like an aviary situation or a colony situation or whatever you wanna call it, a more natural setting, or in cages. So each quail, Caternic quail, only requires about one square foot of space per bird, right? Whereas chickens need 12 square feet. So you can see whereas it would be unkind to put a chicken in these rabbit cages like this, the quail are really very happy. Um, generally I put one male with like four or five females. When they're growing out you can put more of them in a cage because they're smaller. Right now these are just my breeders and I'm getting eggs from them right now. So if you live in an urban area or you just need, for whatever reason, to have them in a smaller space or you just really, cages are just gonna work better for you because of predators or whatever, quail are a better choice than chickens. You can see we have cages stacked. We just have two at one time because I'm short. <laughs> um, these are just rabbit cages. But because of predators, which are a big issue where I live, I live in the woods, people. We have everything. We have every, every predator. Um, my husband, out of scrap lumber, built like an outer cage to go around it, and this has a very fine mesh. Nobody can reach in through that and grab a quail head and yank it off like a raccoon would do. That's just what works for us. Okay, now let's go over to the chickens and talk about why chickens might be better for you. Okay, I'm in the chicken run right now. The chickens are afraid of the camera and tripod, so they might not show up behind me, but that's where I am. So let's talk about now why you might prefer chickens. Okay, if you love chicken meat, there's no substitute when it comes to quail, in my opinion. To me, they're, they're different. There's a little bit more flavor in the quail, like I said. So if you really love chicken meat, you probably should try to raise chickens. Another reason you might want them is that chickens generally will hatch and raise their own offspring. Not always. Sometimes you may wish you had a broody hen and you just don't get one. Um, but generally, if you wait like till their second year, they usually become pretty good mothers. Um, some breeds are better at it than others, so do your research if that's what you want. Quail, on the other hand, generally don't go broody. Now, I have had some people tell me that if you're raising your quail in like a, a more natural setting and they're on the ground and they have bushes to hide in and things like that, they go broody all the time. I've had other people who raise their quail that way say, really? <laughs> I've never experienced that. So the general experience is that no, quail are not gonna bother to sit on their eggs and raise their own young. Um, again, this might, genetics might play a part in this. Some are going to be naturally more motherly than others. Another reason to have chickens versus quail is chickens are great foragers. Quail are not. They really aren't. Even when you do raise them on the ground, they, they're definitely going to need supplementation. Now, I'm a believer that even if you have your quail 
I mean, I'm sorry, your chickens on the ground and let them forage, you really need to supplement some feed as well. Um, very few of us have great forage. Now, that might be different if you have them in a chicken tractor and you know, you've looked at your soil, you know there's lots of good bugs in that, you know what you're growing is really nutritious for those chickens. Even then, I would recommend that you give them a little bit of feed so that if they are missing something in their diet, they lay, they lay for you and they're healthy birds and they're growing at a good pace if they're meat birds. And like I said, meat birds are not very good at foraging, but egg layers generally are. Chickens are also less sensitive to the light. Now both birds will stop laying eggs when, like in the winter, when there's just not enough light coming to them. Their body tells them to rest. Now is not a good time to have babies. But in my experience, quail are way more sensitive to this than chickens. Now, admittedly, Australorps are a good breed for laying eggs in the winter. But I think you will find that with quail, if you want eggs through the dimmer months or you live in an area where there just isn't I think it's 16 hours of sun that quail need uh, every day to lay eggs. You're gonna need to supplement with some electric lights. And in fact, that's what I do and that's what I have found. Another really good reason to have chickens versus quail is the smell of their poop. Oh my goodness. I've been around a lot of manure in my day. <laughs> what a thing to brag about, right? But quail poop? There is a lot of it. Those little birds poop a lot. And it is stinky. It, I, you know, bird poop generally is, but man, it's worse than chickens any day. So if it really bothers you to have stinky poop laying around, quail are not for you. Um, you would end up having to clean those cages every day if it really bothers you. I don't. Right now with my, just my breeders, my layers, uh, I clean them about once a week and I'm fine with that. Um, another really big deal with quail that chickens do not have is dander. Now I'm sure all birds have dander, right? But quail are just horrendous with their dander. Um, I had to keep mine when I first started the chicks indoors longer than they really needed to be. Um, they were fully feathered, they could have gone outside, but our cage system wasn't fully set up yet. And man, I noticed immediately uh, the dander over everything. It was gross, it made us sneeze and have issues. And even when they're outside, I have them in like a covered carport area, dander gets all over everything. So if you tend to be allergic to bird dander, you do not want quail. Um, and you know, if it really bothers you to have things dirty in their area and you don't want to be cleaning constantly, then chickens are a much better choice for you. Well, if you want to raise fewer animals, chickens are a better choice than quail, right? Because quail eggs and the meat are smaller, you're going to be raising a lot more animals because chickens are bigger and their eggs are bigger, you need fewer of them to get the same amount of food. So if that is an issue for you, bear that in mind. But also remember, the chickens do take, they need more space to be healthy. I mean, when I talk about how many square feet they need, that's a minimum amount, and I would feel bad only having them in that small amount of space. They like to roam around and scratch, right? That's how God made them. I think that chickens are easier to protect from predators. So, you know, if you're living in the suburbs or in an urban area, predators, while you need to make sure things are predator-proof, they're way less of an issue than if you live in a rural area. Um, so, if you live in a rural area like I do, where you have bear and you have uh, big cats and you have, you know, everything on down to uh, wolves and coyotes and raccoons and fox and, you know, all the way down the chain that are predators, even rats we have here, right? We might have that in an urban area. Um, then, you know, chickens are going to be easier to protect. You just need to give them a secure coop at night and uh, some kind of run, whether it's mobile or not. We have had to put 
for the first time ever, we had to put some kind of covering on our run. That's what this is. This is snow fencing. That was the cheapest thing we could find because normally we have had found with chickens that if we had tree cover, the, the bird predators that would fly down into the coop just like didn't even see our birds. It wasn't a big deal, but we had some very aggressive hawk um, come into our run and try to steal a chicken. Thankfully I was right there and I scared it off. But so as long as you can keep them covered and at night they're where something can't dig in, chickens are pretty good. The quail, you know, they, they fly much better. They're smaller, so it's easier for a raccoon to reach in and pull their head off. Um, it's easier for a rat to eat them through the cage. They're just a little bit more difficult to protect from predators, in my opinion. If you want an animal that works harder for your homestead, chickens are definitely the way to go. Quail, they sit there. They're really busy, little noisy animals. <laughs> my, my teenage daughter said uh, we have the quail in with our rabbits in the same uh, enclosure, in the same carport, let's put it that way, on different sides. <clears throat> and she said that the quail are like the rabbit's tweaker neighbors. <clears throat> Unfortunately, she knows what it's like to have a tweaker neighbor. <coughs> See, they're kind of loud. Uh, but uh, it's true, they're really noisy and busy and always up in the middle of the night and that kind of thing. But, um, and that's, and they eat and they poop and they do provide you meat and eggs, but they don't do anything else. Chickens can give you something else. Chickens will work through your compost. They will, if you give them scraps, you know, they eat them and turn them into eggs or meat. Um, you can release them into your garden bed in the fall and they'll go through and sort of till the soil, eat the bugs, eat the... <laughs> they're trying to prove that they're louder than the quail. <laughs> the hens are bickering over their nesting boxes. So they have three nesting boxes in there, which is plenty. They have to always, they want to lay all in the same one. So then they do this. <clears throat> They're like siblings, they argue. Uh, anyway, you can put the chickens into your garden and they will lightly fertilize it, eat the bugs, they'll eat the remaining plants. <laughs> and so they're good workers on your homestead as well. Uh, finally, I just want to say, the personality of the birds is very different. I mean, animals are like people. There's lots of different sizes and personalities and so forth. But generally speaking, quail are the dumbest animals that I have ever raised. <laughs> they're really, really not smart at all. Um, and they're not really like a sweet dumb either. They're not particularly, in general, there are exceptions, uh, pet-like, I would say. You know, they don't really love to be pet generally or held generally. Chickens, on the other hand, <clears throat> again, you can have some that are really grumpy and some that are really friendly, but generally speaking, <laughs> they're a little bit more pet-like. Now, this is a pro or con, depending upon your point of view. If you're raising meat, most of us aren't going to be very happy if we're thinking of that animal as a pet. We're not going to want to butcher it, right? Um, but on the other hand, if you're just growing for eggs and maybe you're just getting started in homesteading and you just want to sit around and watch the birds, in my personal opinion, chickens are a better choice. I also think that quail are generally more work. Um, and I know this is in part because I keep them in cages. Every day I have to... Um, I'd have to deal with their feed like I showed you with the little pie plates. I have to empty their poop trays um, and of course feeding and watering them and and I've sort of given up on the dander but periodically I go in there I take the birds out put them someplace else and you know use a shop vac for all the feathers and the dander. Whereas chickens you know if they're in a stationary run especially, basically I let them out in the morning, make sure they have water, which I have a big waterer, that's no big deal. I feed them once a day and I grab their eggs and they're just less work. So something people have asked, and well, my husband and I have asked this ourselves. 
he loves the eggs. So we may raise quail forever for that reason. But I have wondered, well, if we get more meat sources on our homestead, would I still raise quail? Because that's really the reason I got into quail, is I was looking for an easy meat source. Uh, because fencing is super expensive and because we live in the woods. We don't really have pasture. We have just enough for our sheep and our sheep are a heritage breed that um, they're really good at eating like briars and weeds and things. They prefer that to like pasture grass. And I think the answer is no. <laughs> I think that if we come to that point where we have more meat sources, that I personally would give up quail. I don't particularly enjoy raising them. They're interesting little animals. You know, I have an appreciation for them and, and the amazing amount of eggs they lay and, and so on and so forth. But they're just my least favorite animal to raise here on the homestead. So this is a very personal opinion. I know there are people who love quail who even raise them as pets. I find I don't really get that, but you know, everyone's different. This is just... <laughs> what I think. Does this help you? I don't know. To me, it's like a toss up when you're talking about eggs, in my opinion, because of the frequency of the laying and the number of eggs they lay and the feed to egg ratio, quail are the winner. When you're talking meat, I think quail are the winner. Yes, they're smaller, but they grow so much faster. They reproduce so quickly. One thing I forgot to mention though, as I'm just thinking about this is because quail, are, they don't really go broody, they're not likely going to raise their own um, babies, you are either going to be reliant upon somebody else to get chicks when you need to refresh the stuff, or you're going to need an incubator. So if that is just, you know, some people just don't want to go there. So that is something to bear in mind. But that aside, to me, quail are the winner. There's plus sides and downsides to every type of livestock. Hopefully I've laid those out for you. Obviously we still raise chickens. I can't imagine not raising the chickens. Um, I might make my flock smaller next year because gosh, we're overwhelmed with eggs, uh, you know, b between the quail eggs and the chicken eggs. But uh, let me know what you think. Do you raise both? What do you what do you think? What's your opinion? And if you have questions about raising either chickens or quail or any homesteading questions, really, please let me know. I would love to help you and answer the questions to the best of my ability. <laughs> and always, I hope you will like and subscribe and share our videos if you like them. Thanks a lot. Bye.